Okay. So only me. You're out. Cool. Yes. <laughs> so the reason I showed you apported crystals and spoon bending is not so that you'll think I'm super cool. Right. Sure I am. I don't know. Um, but <laughs> from the time we are born, when we're born, when we come into this life, um, we know who we are on our soul level. Before we come into life, we choose the lives we have. The first soul contract you make is to your mother because that's the person who will carry you in their body. And you make various soul contracts, various life paths. You know, if you follow your life path or not, you know, that's always like an interesting situation. For another time, because that will take like the whole time. But when you are born, you know who you are. Babies are born with total wisdom. As we age, by the time we're six, most people have forgotten who we were and why we came to life. You'll hear little kids, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, oh, look at that fairy, look at that angel. You know, they have their invisible playmates. And by the time they're six, they're accepting the reality that is told to them by those outside of their body, by the world around them, by family, by society, by what we are taught in school, you know, by what the newspapers teach us, you know. So we stop being who we are from the inward going outward and we become who we are as dictated from outward latching into inward. And this can create, um, oh, by the way, if at any point people want to get food or anything, you know, again, just be casual. Don't, don't suffer because I'm talking. Just, you know, I have a cord right here, okay? Don't trip on it. Um, so as we go forward in life, we might forget our soul contracts, forget our life path. We may, if we're taught in a, you know, in certain families might be taught that self-deprivation and being like self-abusive is a good thing. It keeps you humble and pure. So we end up repressing ourselves and putting ourselves down so that we can be humble. Tonight's ceremony we're going to connect with our beautiful sister moon and we're going to also connect with our ancestors to return to the state of being when we were young, born and young and redefine some of those relationships so that we can go forward knowing what it's like to be who you are from the inside going outward who you designed yourself to be, not whom society told you to be. When I was a child, and you're gonna laugh, anyone other than my mother told me I was to play with Barbie dolls and grow up and become a housewife. When I was in high school, my um, counselor, my guidance counselor, told me I was too stupid to ever go to college and I should just find a husband to take care of me. You know, so I actually thought that I was a very stupid person because that is what the people I turned to for mentoring, you know, led me to believe. And then I grew up and learned, oh, I'm actually not that stupid. I'm pretty clever. And I actually have skills and abilities. The process of learning what skills and abilities I have took me back to where I originally was and learned who I was before society brought this to me. It took me a lot of years. We'll see if we can do this for you in a couple of hours, all right? Uh, now, I'm not saying all of us have bad thoughts or ideas or that society brought out the worst in us. Society also brings the best. and We get a lot of support. So we're also gonna like play with that a little. Um, tonight's ceremony is really a combination of some uh, Hindu Pranashakti Guru Mandala work, uh, a little shamanic 
work and just a little earth magic and a little bit of hypnotherapy thrown in with the spirit journey quest. Um, oh yeah, definitely angelic. And there might be a little channel bit coming through. So it's a hodgepodge. But what I've learned in my years of traveling the world, working with sacred and divine people, is it doesn't matter what practice they have. It's all the same from different vantages. It doesn't matter if you are Mongolian or from Burma or from, you know, Peru or from Greece or Ireland, you know, it comes down, if you are working in the resonance of love and the frequency of truth, you may have different words and variations on ceremonies, but it's the same. So any practice that you work with, you'll find resonance with what we're doing tonight. And um, so I'd like to talk to you for a minute about the cycles of the moon. You can do ceremonies for the moon any night of the month. Generally, a new moon ceremony is when you're planting the seeds of what you wish for. And the full moon ceremony is where you are ready to manifest what you wish for. Now, these are not wishes from your brain. They're wishes from your heart and your soul. If you say, I wish to manifest a lot of money, you're going to have some problems because money isn't real. Like we think it's real because we invented money and we created our society functioning around it. But what was that country just like a couple of years ago? They decided to change their currency and they told everyone, you have 48 hours before our current currency is non-existent and people are running the banks and the amount of currency they made for the new currency, they only printed a small amount. So a lot of people ended up with dead currency and like people who were very wealthy were suddenly very poor. You know, after the Civil War, Confederate cur currency, useless. You know, currency is not real. And if you say to, well, you're like, okay, I work with Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel, I want you to manifest $10,000 for me. Archangel Gabriel would say, okay, here's your $10,000. You must keep it and enjoy it as is. You're like, ah, uh, no, I want to pay my bills and buy a car and take a vacation. And he'll say, but you said you wanted money. I gave you money. You're like, well, no, I don't want that. I want what the money will do for me. So instead you say, Okay, I want to be like stress free, have my bills paid off with ease, have a new car and a vacation. Then they go, oh, that we can work with. And the next thing you know, you get a little pay raise at work. Someone calls you and said, I just got a new car. Uh, would you like my old car? I'll sell it to you for, you know, a thousand bucks. And you're like, oh, I can afford that because I can sell my car for 500 and I just got a pay raise. And then a friend will call and say, hey, I just want a vacation for two on the radio. Uh, would you like to go with me? So you need to make sure what you want to manifest. It's really from your heart and your soul and from your state of fun, not your head dictating things. doesn't matter because you're, we're going to do a spirit journey where your soul will tell you what we're manifesting. Because if we decide now everything we're thinking Maybe what you really, really want, or it may be what you think you want. So when we go on spirit journey, we'll find out. Tonight is a beautiful full moon. We'll go outside and say hello to Sister Moon. And um, some people call the moon Brother Moon, Mother Moon, Father Moon. It's all the same because the moon does not have an actual gender and moon energy doesn't have a gender. So... Um, Okay. Um, first of all, I want to say I'm so grateful to all of you being here tonight, sharing this time together. We're doing a fun ceremony. Well, I think it's fun. 
some of you may feel there were times when it's a little more emotional, but um, it's a ceremony where we're going to really look into ourselves and see what we want. And then we will look at what's keeping us within our hearts and our minds from what we want. And then we will release what's keeping us from it and claim what we want. The art of manifestation, and anyone who's ever been to a puja to Lakshmi, um, have you been? Yeah, I thought so. Uh, Lakshmi is the Hindu goddess of money and uh, joyful abundance. The first stage of manifestation is always releasing whatever is keeping you from what you want. I'm going to tell you a little story. I had a time where my wellness center was, went from like busy, so successful, everything great, suddenly like no one was showing up for my events. Things were normally like 10, 20, 40 people would show up, zero. I was freaking out. So a friend of mine said, we're going to do, we're going to go visit Lakshmi. And I did three Lakshmi pujas. A puja is a ceremony. They're just wonderful. They're singing and waving your arms and flowers everywhere. Good food. They're amazing. And um, so I went to three pujas in 10 days. And then the next thing I knew, everything in my life was awful. I thought it was bad. It was so much worse. I was like just in tears. Everything was going horribly wrong. I had to fire an employee, like my main employee, and he crashed my car and he was like getting stoned at work. And he was like, oh my God, he trashed my place. Like a bunch of near duels came in and had a big party. And, um, you know, there were other things that I just had to like fire people and get strict with people and all this stuff. And as soon as I did that, and I spent one day cleaning my wellness center. As I was cleaning my wellness center, all these people started wandering in saying, I don't know why I've been away from here so long, but I suddenly thought of you and I thought I should come here. Oh my God, what happened? I said, I have to clean it. You know, I fired this guy and he trashed my place. And I went, oh, let me help. So what's, you know, when you need to like, reinvent anything you know you like throw out the old and then you clean all of my patrons were coming in without knowing why and they were helping me clean and then the next that night I had an event and all these people came in saying I don't know why I've been away but I just got a thought in my head I haven't seen you for a while I thought I should come in and everything was doing great in order for things to be well I had to release everything that was keeping me from being well. If you're carrying things in your heart and soul that are harmful for you, it is really hard to get to that which brings you joy and healthful well being. If you are carrying on your shoulder loads that weigh you down, it is really hard for you to help people in a healthful, active way. So tonight we're going to see a little bit of what it is we need to release so that we can have an invite. When you manifest, you release what holds you, but you know, you're like, okay, here I am. This is what I want. I release this. I energetically connect with that. And either that comes to you or as you go forward on your path, there it is. Thank you. I really appreciate your head nod. Thank you so much. One of the ways to do this, first we'll do um, we'll do two little spirit journeys tonight. The first one is for manifestation, and then the second one, we are going to call to our ancestors. When we come into, and it doesn't even matter if you know who they are, because they know who you are. Believe me, when we come into life, we're pure little beings. 
And you know how some people, they if they have like a really happy childhood, it seems like, and they're like well supported, the rest of their life just seems to go well and they have all the luck that everyone else wants. And then you have someone, maybe um, they had real traumas in their child. Maybe someone was like an extreme, like they were abused and they're overeating and they grow older and they're like, okay, I've been through therapy. I've been through like weight support program. I'm ready for life. But it just seems to be always a struggle to bring them back to that. Here is one way of seeing this. When we're young, when we're born, all of our ancestors are there watching over us. In some cultures, the grandmother is like the midwife for the baby. And as soon as the child is born, before anyone else touches the child, the grandmother whispers the name of an ancestor into that child's ear. And then, you know, does whatever and hands to the mother. The only people who will ever hear that name spoken out loud is that one time between the grandmother and the baby. Um, or whoever is midwife will be a trusted person and the baby. That ancestor is charged with looking out for the well-being of this growing human throughout this person's entire life. As we are children and we're growing up and all our ancestors are watching over us, you know, some ancestors are amazing. They're the kind of ancestor you want to hang out with. Some ancestors are miserable SOBs. They're just awful. Some are greedy, some are depressed, some are this, some are that. Just because they're in the afterlife does not mean they've become their best selves. So if you have a wonderful, happy, supportive childhood, your ancestors who can energetically connect with that will connect with you. And throughout your entire life, your loving, joyous, supportive ancestors are giving you energy to help you go forward. If you had a childhood where there was like trauma, neglect, abuse, or even just like a horrible self-esteem or whatever, if you feel alienated, the ancestors that energetically connect with that are going to connect with you. All the ancestors are watching over you, but they're the ones that got their fingers in your pot, so to speak. And when you go forward and you're like, no matter how much therapy, no matter whatever, I can't shake the feeling that I'm an imposter or I'm a loser or I'm a whatever, because these guys are like energetically sucking you up. So our second journey will be to call all of our ancestors and we will invite our loving ancestors to connect with us and send complete love to all ancestors who exist beneath the frequency of love. And then we will do a cord cutting. The thing about cord cutting is love can never be severed. I prefer calling it a cord cleansing ceremony. Everything beneath the frequency of love, unless you wish it to remain, is severed and the energy is sent back. Everything on the frequency of like friendship, love, joy is cleansed, purified, and magnified. I know people like friends, romantic partners, who will do regular cord cutting ceremonies between themselves, like even weekly, because it just grows and enhances all that's good in their relationship. So understand cord cutting, cord cleansing, it's about growing the love. And if you have ancestors that are below the frequency of love, you'll have two choices. They can either absorb the love that you and your loving ancestors are sending to them, or they can disconnect. That will be it. So it's going to be really fun. It really helps bring you back to the support and friendship you deserve to carry forward. Any questions? All right.